Welcome to the Finding the Magic podcast, where books come alive. I'm Tricia Copeland, a fiction author and host of this show. If you love books, finding great reads, and hearing about the story behind the story directly from the authors, this is the place for you. Whether you like fantasy, science fiction, dystopian, or romance titles, I think you'll find something to love in my playlist. Listen in to discover something magical about a book or two today. Hi, Catherine. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. Not too bad. I'm so excited to have you today. I have Dr. Catherine Hutchison Hayes. She is author of, among several books, A Fifth of the Story, which is a new, how would you describe it? Thriller? Yeah, thriller suspense espionage, domestic terrorism. Yeah. (laughs) Tell us about that book. Yeah. So I've got it here for anybody who's um, on video. Right. And it's um, it's a called a fifth of the story. And basically what happens is there is um, an attack on U.S. soil and Brock, our protagonist, he's an agent of the CIA and he finds himself in the middle of the mess and um, he soon discovers that there is a horrible breach within the intelligence community, and it's threatening to um, dis- destroy the nation's safety. But um, what's really important is that he finds himself in a predicament where he is defending the lives of not just his one of his best friend's wives and her mother, but also their two little children. And so much of the novel takes place in uh, a hotel, right, oh, where wow. they are trying to outrun um, this extremist organization, and it 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 turns out that it is, um, you know, it's one, it's somebody who's a close ally of him. When he finds out, is at the bottom of this. Um, so it's there's lots of twists in there, um, lots of tension. It's like every. For me, as a mom, it's like every mom's like worst fear you're confronting. Um, but no, no children or animals were harmed in the making of this novel. <laughs> That's great. Thank you for that, Catherine. <laughs> yeah. Your head may have exploded while you were trying to write it. But... <laughs> yeah. So it, it for, to me, it. Um, it was really fun writing this book because a lot of this is what my husband did for so long. He was in he was in the intelligence agency, the highest um, form of of our, of our intelligence agency within the military, and he did that both as an um, as an army officer for twenty almost twenty five years, and then he did it for um, like another ten years in the civilian sector. So I have an in-house expert and I have access to his people. And so it, it's really realistic. And it's, it's about, and what was fun about this is I did this from a male perspective and that was, that was super fun, hard, but fun. And um, it delves into loyalty, friendship, things, things that are really important to me, um, extremism. It, the research for this was way more than the book actually is right i've got so many pages of research just looking at the fact that actually americans are the biggest threat to americans and so that that is hard for us to it's hard to stomach but in doing the research i'm like oh my gosh we're like self-imploding so this book is examining all of that it's a fictitious story but lots of the organizations extremists organizations that are named are actually real okay Well, I think a lot of people are grasping to understand the current political climate in our, because I feel like that too, like our biggest threat is ourselves because Mm -hmm. we have this group over here and this group over here and, and and there's nobody in the middle, it seems like. So, um, so yeah, I, even from a fun thriller aspect view, but also examining all those issues, like why do we get these extremist groups and why do people feel like they have to go to these links to make their cases and how, why aren't people being heard and all of those issues, but, and where do you stand? I mean, who can you count on? Mm -hmm. Um, Where are you going to draw the line with enough is enough, right? Right. Really? Yeah. Really interesting themes in there. Um, 
I don't shy away from the fact that I am a Christ follower, but I, I am concerned about some of some of many people who call themselves Christians. I think they're doing more harm to the face of that religion than anybody because it's they're associating lots of extremist ideas with religion, which is super dangerous. Yeah, well, it was interesting. I looked at your website and I saw that you had been a school print teacher and a school principal and a counselor. <laughs> and some of your other books are really based on um, lifting up women and yeah. looking at those issues. Um, mm -hmm. And in, you know, in Christianity. And I thought, well, how did this woman write a thriller? <laughs> to me. I mean, so, well, obviously you had the background information. You do you love reading thrillers too? I do. I love reading them. I love um, watching thriller movies. That's one of my favorite genres is, is that action suspense. Um, and so yeah um some of the some of the people i read i um it's like ted decker um there's tosca lee there's michael conley stephen king he borders on thriller slash horror right yeah. but it just his, his twisted plots i just they're so good lots of things you never see coming um so those are a few of my octavia butler even though she's more she's sci-fi but just love the way that she writes Zora Neale Hurston, um, Walter Mosley, he's more, he's more mystery, but their way of writing is just so rich. I just love to study the way I love to read. So, and I feel like that's one of the best ways to become a better author. So those are a few of my favorites. And so what, what how did you decide or what led you to say, okay, I'm going to write a novel? Yeah, so I I always I've always written even even as a a school principal and as a, a teacher I had I would do I was a columnist and absolutely love journalism I thought at one point I was going to go into that or medicine <laughs> anyway I landed on education somehow some way and um, I loved the art of the short story and I had to, been developing this book of short stories and I found out that st short stories don't really sell that well as a book. And so I started taking each short story and developing them into novel ideas. And that is really how the seed of this story started. And then I was, um, it was a mentor I was working on. I was working on a whole different book and he was like, why don't you write? He's like, tell me what you do. What does your husband do? He goes, you have access to this person. You love this kind of suspense theme. Why don't you just write a, something about what he, what he does, like create stories. And I, I said, oh my gosh, why don't I do that? <laughs> and I had, I had so much fun. And it actually blessed my relationship with my husband because there are things that he'd never talked to me about. And I started asking lots of questions and he would, I would start researching. And I was like, is that true? Can you, re do we really have drones that are look like flies and can go through vents? And he's like, yeah, we can. Wow. So, that is how it's from a twisty, crazy way. That's how I started writing thrillers. And I'm like, what? How did I not know I was a thriller chick? Like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, you had a secret weapon there that you never knew you had, right? And and I do have, I do, I, I can be, even though I love, listen, I always tell people that's all I got. Kids, babies, children, animals really like me. They just gravitate toward me. Um, but I have I have a twisty mind and a really morbid kind of thinking. And just to give you an idea, when I was saying I was thinking about going into medicine at first, I started out as pre-med, I was going to be a mortician, right? So yeah, that kind of, this kind of stuff didn't bother me. Right, yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting. it works. You can look at it more, maybe more objectively and not as the emotion is not of the loss or, yeah. you know, whatever happened to the person that's laying there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. interesting. Well, I think a lot of that sometimes comes from kind of like, even when I'm writing, whatever I'm writing, I'm separated from my present life and I I'm transported into the story that I'm writing. So. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's fun that you challenged yourself in writing that, that male voice too. Yeah, it was, um, and it was, 
there were things that were a little tricky. It's it, for me, I, you know, I had a father, a great father in my life. I had bro a bunch of brothers, you know, I'm married, um, I have a grandson. So I know men, but there's certain things you don't really, you don't really understand. So there were things where my, my mentor is a guy and he was, he was like, no, nah, a guy doesn't speak like this. And I would run a lot through my husband. And he's like, no, the dudes are not going to be hugging it out. They're slap, they'll slap each other on the shoulder. I'm like, but they're emotional. They so they suffered loss. He goes, look, no, guys will do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking, so two different shows have come to thought. Another one popped up. So Scandal seems like the series Scandal. It seems very yeah. scandalish. Yes. Um, but with a male character, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. there's so many plots and twists and turns in that. And, and the know. bad guy ends up being her father, right? And just who she she would have least expected and he's um, so bad oh my no, god evil to the core <laughs> so bad <laughs> and, i and and i don't even know if i can go on watching it i i skipped when he became so evil and then i was like oh i'm out i can't do it anymore <laughs> i couldn't do it because i really liked him in the beginning i know i really like first of all i think he's a phenomenal actor I, i've watched him for for a while and uh Oh my gosh. I, you're right. I couldn't take how evil he was. Yeah. yeah it was well, bad. and then the other series, and this is totally a different series, but Virgin River, who has a lot of military strong male characters, but they're always hugging each other. So, yeah. Well, yeah, that is true. Oh my. Yeah. Well, and if you read her, Robin Carr's books, it's completely different from the series. It's all romance, but they're always hugging each other there too, like just male bonding. So that's interesting mm -hmm. that, you know, mm -hmm. maybe at higher ranks, they're just like, no, I don't hug you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Fun. So I, you also do a podcast, correct? Yeah, I do a podcast called Murder, Mystery, and Mayhem Laced with Morality. So it's more so a space for authors who write what I write along that vein. But I do have other guests. I, I, I never say no. Um, if it's something that's maybe like erotica or, or something to that effect, I would say we're going to stick to your journey because it's a clean podcast. Okay. Um, and so um, we'll talk we'll talk more about the journey. If there's a subject that's really interesting that has to do with murder, mystery and mayhem, <laughs> like divorce, that was just um, interviewed a lady about a very interesting um, organization that she's developed um, called Soul Custody, and it's about divorce. So, and it's Soul, S-O-U-L, custody. Okay. Yeah, so we all, I always turn it back around to the theme of the podcast, but yeah, for the most part, thriller, suspense, and it's a podcast for the fans of those writers, and th the fans are hilarious. I better, you know, Oh, I, oh my gosh, I better be on my game getting that episode out. So that you have the fans and then you have aspiring writers and then you have established, established writers who are checking out what other right, some behind the scenes things about other writers. Fine. So how long have you done the podcast? Was this before you even thought about writing your book? Well, it was during the time that I was right, started writing. Yeah. So I, I started the podcast in 2021. Okay. I start the concept was like 2020, you know, when we were all like when you're shut, all shut away <laughs> thinking about what we could possibly do with our lives if we ever get out of our homes, right? So <laughs> the concept um was there and I started learning, you know, taking classes on online how to do it and and that kind of thing and just started 2021 before a book was released. Yeah. I had no platform in that that genre whatsoever. And I thought, well, at least I can hang out with people who write this. Um, I can, I can learn from them, I can develop community. And it was it was a great move, because there are conferences that I go to, and I already have people there, right? Like, the first time I went to a conference called Killer Nashville, which is a niche co conference for people who write um, in this genre, I had already interviewed several people. So it was so much fun going, even though I had never been there before, I was able to meet people that I interviewed and I, and I continued to attend that conference each year. Fun. Yeah. And so we, I started my podcast the exact same year for the exact same reason. Really? I, well, I missed my author and I was already an author at that time, but I missed okay. my author community because mm -hmm. we would go to these conferences and these cons, then I'd see all of them. And then I missed them. And I thought, 
well, okay, number one, if I start a podcast, I can talk to my friends. Yep. And number two, we can share our work. And number three, other people can listen and they would yes. share our work, right? So I love yeah. it. Mm. Yeah, so we probably, I don't know if you know Randy Ware. He's a thriller author. Yes, in the, I do. In the Denver area. So we're yes. friends. And I actually met him in Nashville. This is funny enough. We went to Utopia, which is a conference. Oh, I think they still had it this year. But anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, he just went to Killer Nashville and I knew he was there. So I yeah. saw Randy there. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. him and his wife would love them to death. So yeah, very sweet. Yeah. Mm hmm. So what's next for you? Is there a follow up to this book or? Yes. So, yeah. So there's a, I've already written a book. I, I finished this book last year. Um, it's called By the Fire of Zeal. And um, that it's kind of like a prequel to this book. Oh. All my books, even though I'm working on a complete series with five books, they can be read as standalones. You wouldn't have to read one book to understand okay. the other. So it's a prequel and it delves into the life of an FBI agent called Patricia Pang or Patty Pang. Um, she is a wife of one of the CIA agents and she looks very, there, there's some really um, suspicious things about her, but this backstory really delves into her life and the things that happened to her and her triggers and, and you really understand her more. And that, that was, that was a fun book to write because I could pour a lot of myself into her. Um, the, this book, A Fifth of the Story, my debut thriller, um, all of my main characters were, were white men. Oh. <laughs> and some of my characters are then, my secondary characters were African-American and all kinds of other things. Um, and then this next book by, this, by the Zeal of Fire, because I'm writing Patty Pang, I could identify with her, right? We're, we're, we experience a, a much of the same kind of life. So I could consider her one of my good friends. And so now I'm, I'm writing the backstory of her mother, which is Mrs. Lipset. She's actually a senator's wife. He is a presidential hopeful. But this third novel that I'm working on, it, it starts off, it's, it, it, it's unbelievable what she went through. She's an immigrant from Jamaica, like my family um lots of things that she confronted and it kind of goes into some dark stuff about sex trafficking children things that are near and dear to my heart that are happening in real time here in our nation and affecting us um, in a significant way so i am a third of the way through that book hope to get through that in a few months and be done and start the next one that's really exciting. You're really cranking these out. And yeah. for people who love your book, at least they're not going to have to wait too long for the next one. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so are these written in first person or is it a third person point of view? They're a third person point of view. Okay. I love reading uh, first person. I don't know. Do you write in first person or third? I write mostly in first, but mm -hmm. I just switched over. My last book was the first one I did a third person. And I love it was it's romance. But I'd love mm. to be able to show both characters and both sides of the romance yes. story, the male and female yeah. voice. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just dip my toes into that. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, God bless you. First person, I think, is really hard. It, you've got to do it well. I love reading it. Um, but for third person, you're right. I, for me, it gives it gives more of a wide angle view, where first person is just a singular. Right, lens. you can only yeah. tell what they're seeing and what they're experiencing, and maybe with the third person, you can kind of widen that, especially with a right. thriller suspense book that you know mm -hmm. has bombs. Come, maybe not bombs, but yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, they're <laughs> bombs. They're bombs. <laughs> Things coming at them that you know they're not going to know, and that can really build suspense for the reader as well. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, and how long is the book? How long do these run? Um, how many pages? So they run, this one was like 90,000 words, something to okay. that effect. Um, okay. So yeah. it's like about 300 pages. And then the second one I'm working on it, it'll be a little longer. It's, it's about 95,000 words right now. Fun. And how, how does the Patricia character fit into, you said it's a prequel, but she's a mm -hmm. wife of, is she a wife of one of his friends? Of Brock yeah. Brock yeah. So there is, um, there is a, a guy there who is fighting for his life the entire <laughs> the entire novel. I'm so sorry. Um, and it talks and, and 
at that at the point of this novel, a fifth of the story, he and his wife are estranged. They're separated, and um, but the at the end they reconcile. And so the prequel talks about how they got to that point. Okay. And it's interesting, yeah, because they're in a mixed marriage, right? She's African American, um, Afro Caribbean, um, and he is American. He's he's Caucasian. So it, it goes into the intricacies of a mixed marriage. Uh, I know all about that. Our family is extremely diverse. So I really could write what I had experienced and what I knew. It was very real. And I, I feel like a reader would really sense that. That's neat. And too, I mean, the, the stress of a marriage of someone being in the CIA or in a military mm -hmm. position, that's much different than most of us experience. Right. I mean, just someone being in the military is one level, but someone being CIA, having to be very secretive and maybe they can't tell you much of what right. they're doing, that would add a whole nother stress dimension to a marriage too, I would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good point. So it just, it shows you, and, 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 and then the thing about it is she lives a very secretive life because her cover is that she's a school teacher. Everybody thinks she's a school teacher and that's her cover, but she, but She's not by day she might be a uh, you know a computer teacher and um, by night she's like a gun toting FBI agent. Oh, okay, so she's in the business too then. She's in the business and you're right that's exactly what it's built on. He has a level of secrecy that you know even though they're they were close, there are things he can't tell her about. There are things she can't tell him about. So it builds this immediate distrust of of the other. One, one against right. the other. Yeah. So there's that. And then there's a the complication of of being in, in a, um, a mixed race marriage and, and that and the things that you might experience because of that. And then culturally, um, her, fa her mother's family uh, was not from the States. They were Caribbean. And so just even those cultural things, um, there's also themes of child loss that she dealt, that we delve into and how that impacts the relationship. So lots of odds that um, that they fight against, but it's it's a good ending, you know. It's a good ending about how they resolve those things and fight. Okay, so it. happily ever after in all of your books, then, or or at least happy for now. <laughs> Have, uh, yeah, I like. I'm an optimist, even though I might write some of the things might be dark and kind of violent. It's true to form. It's not just gratuitous violence, just to have violence. Um, it makes sense, and it's a lot of the things that we are actually experiencing in real time. But I, I'm, I'm a forever optimist, and so I do believe in happy endings, and I do believe that that we sh we, we can resolve things Be despite our differences. I believe that we can resolve our issues with our relationships. Fine. So. And so that popped another question in my head. So grit level, do do murder miss? Well, I know we have grit level in horror movies, right? Yeah. So do thrillers have the same grit level scale? Um, it's interesting to me. Sometimes I'll read a book and I think maybe my mind just glosses over scenes that I yeah. think are too graphic. And then when yeah. I watch the movie, I'm horrified. And then my husband will say, well, that was in the book. And I'm like, really? It was in the book? <laughs> <laughs> so how detailed do we get blood spotter in the walls or yeah I, I i i yeah it tends to be kind of graphic um yeah but in a tasteful way that's right? real and, life i mean that's yeah, that's what life. these mm -hmm. people's lives are like right mm -hmm. so, yeah. so i've never seen i've never seen what a bomb can do to somebody but my husband has and so it, it, in in and other people that he's worked with, he they have. And so using that lens and describing things that way, it's realistic. So someone who would experienced that and seen those kinds of things, they would be like, now that person gets it. They're not glamorizing it. They're not making it, you know, more gory than it needs to be, but it's just enough where it's believable. Interesting. Yeah. And I would think, you know, people in those settings have a certain different for for lack of a better word, lens of what they're seeing as yeah. you know, this is their job and maybe they can detach a little bit. Whereas mm -hmm. someone, you know, just witnessing as like a bystander, as a civilian, wouldn't see it differently too, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm.
you have so many levels to this book and your characters <laughs> and your experience and your research and your background. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be underlying every page and doing some research on my own. <laughs> yeah. Just the, um, well, yeah. And obviously with something like this, I think you have to fact check too, because these people that are reading these types of books really want to make sure that, you know, this could be realistic, right? Yeah. Um, it's so it delves into lots of these extremist groups and it's, it's, I mean, it's right there. We, all we have to do is do our research to look at the statistics, what what is really the biggest threat to Americans? And just looking at at that research, looking at the the attacks that have been done to civilians here, like we, there is no aside from war torn um, countries, and even compared to war torn countries, we are very violent as Americans. Everything is about guns it's about it's our movies are violent our games are violent uh, i was concerned about that as a teacher and as a principal because a lot of my because of the threats of of, of guns like I, we've had i've had some horrible scares um with threats to do or people coming i had a, i had a student come come to campus i had a couple of them come to campus with weapons and i'm grateful that that things worked out the right way but it's what they constantly see and it desensitizes them because they can get in a game and they can see how to shoot someone. They can be accurate. They see what it looks like. They're very, these games are super graphic. So it's, I feel, I feel concerned about what's happening to our youth. I feel concerned about us as, a, as Americans, like let's open our eyes and look and see what we're doing. We're self imploding, right? We, why are we training ourselves to be so desensitized to violence on that level? And why are we, why are we taking, why are we constantly building, building walls instead of bridges, right? We have way more in common than we do have that's not common. And so there's this constant division, uh, that divisiveness that is really concerning to me. And so the yeah. book is a little bit about visiting those themes. Yeah. Um, yeah. It seems like, especially now we have the election where everything sounds crazy um Ooh. yeah like really diving in and saying how do i feel about this how do i think about this what is really going on you know and how can i kind of try to make a change for myself and be educated um, yeah. All, yeah all important topics for especially our youth as they're coming up and my kids are just well almost 20 and 22 now and you know yeah. just this will be the first major election they've been able to vote in. So yes, it's yeah, interesting. yeah, it's interesting to see things from their eyes. Yeah, you and I have kids um, in those same age groups, and it's interesting to see what to hear what they're saying. Like, what what is wrong with us? Like, why are we? <laughs> yeah, that's what they're saying to us. What did you do wrong, mom? <laughs> what, what is happening? You know, I, I've I've never I've, I've never lived through a time where you're actually a little worried about even disclosing what party you might be a part of because some some people are they they want to do you harm it's it, it's it's gotten to that point where people are, are acting out violently against each other and it's like wow we've, we've got to stop this is a terrible example we're sending to our young people and sending a horrible message to other countries that look to us as a symbol of unity a symbol of freedom and achieving the american dream like overcoming no matter what so many people come here because they're fleeing persecution and now it's like we're wanting to persecute each other because we we might believe differently we have a different faith we have different ideas about health care we have different ideas about education all kinds of things and and we're at a point which is concerning it is definitely that and it's interesting you say, and I'm definitely the optimist too. So I was thinking, I was having a conversation with a history professor last weekend, and he was like, well, if you really study US history, this has happened time and time again in our country. I mean, the Civil War, um, the Civil Rights Movement, people at extreme ends. And I'm like, yes, but I don't want it to end up like those times. I want it to be resolved peacefully here. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> yeah, they had to go through too much to get to those points. Like, I know. I'm like, he was like, well, my point was that we fixed it. I'm like, yeah, but it wasn't a great, like, leading up to the fix, please. No. Like, uh -uh. That's not what the outlook I want to have on what's going to yeah. happen here. So, yeah. Yeah. Can we come to the ending, please. <laughs> I know. Pe and people constantly bring up, pe you know, somebody somebody like, excuse me, Martin Luther King and all. I'm like, sounds good, but they killed him. Like that was, that was, that was a tough outcome. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, so for me and my podcast, we're gonna focus on books, right? That's yeah. gonna solve all our problems. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is my favorite question to ask all authors. If someone's picking up your book, what do you want that, what's kind of the most important theme or experience that you want them to have from reading your book? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I want them to escape into a story. I do want you to, you know, uh, stay up so late, you have to call into work. I want you to think about the characters and get attached to them. But I really want you to leave with a sense of hope, a sense of hope that we can, that love really does conquer all and if we lean into being loyal if we lean into what is be, what is true and right and just um, that we can be better people and so people who are struggling with extremist ideas maybe it will open their eyes a little bit um, instead of preaching or you know directing a documentary or something like that or writing a nonfiction book about the evils of of uh, racism and all the isms I have, I tell an entertaining story with lots of plot twists, and I want people to be deeply engaged in the characters and their experiences and to come away with a feeling that I want to do better. I want to do better, and I have hope for our nation. I have hope for humanity and the human experience and relationships. I love that. I'm going to get your book. I might have to like skim over the scary parts. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. Tell us all where we can find you and your book. Yeah, so the, the easiest place um, to find me is at my website, and it's the same old three W's, right? And it's dr Catherine, K A T H E R I N E, Hayes, H A Y E S dot com. And there you can find access to the podcast, ac access to um, how to get the book. And, and I really hope that people connect with me on Instagram. I'm trying out TikTok. Please don't laugh at my very sad videos. Um, <laughs> but I'm on Facebook and it's always author Dr. Catherine. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine, for being yeah. here. And I look forward to you being back when you publish your second book. Yes, it would be a lot of fun. I would love that. Awesome. Thanks, mm -hmm. Catherine. Bye. Thank you. Bye now. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Finding the Magic podcast. I'm your host, author and podcaster, Trisha Copeland, and I love getting behind the scenes. If you like the podcast, make sure to subscribe and stop in each week, discover new authors and books. Thanks for listening. And until next time, keep finding the magic.